Roll for Crit is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Come roll with us at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Last year, Gen Con was canceled, or at least the physical version was in lieu of a digital version, and many of us were wondering what they were going to do this year. Well, they have officially announced that they are not going to be canceling the physical one, but instead delaying it a bit and then doing a couple other things as well. First off, we know that there will be a physical Gen Con convention in Indianapolis September 16th to the 19th. But during that time, there'll be a couple other things as well for those who don't want to or can't make it during that period. There's going to be another digital event of Gen Con. This will have its own online platforms as well as digital demos and things like that. Probably something very similar to the one we saw last year. There's also going to be the pop-up Gen Con. These are when you can uh, your local friendly game stores may get kits to demo out games and maybe even sell some of those games that are going on sale at Gen Con. Of course, we are living in the midst of a pandemic, so you can expect there to be some changes to the in-person Gen Con proper at the convention center this year. Some of those changes we know a little bit about, some of them we're not sure of just yet. There is going to be an attendance cap this year. We don't know how much they're going to limit it by, but in past years they've gotten as high as 50 or 60,000 attendees. We can expect that to be probably significantly lower for this year's convention. There are going to be some safety precautions in place that will probably include the requirement of masks, social distancing, temperature checks. They stated that they do not know yet if vaccine will be a requirement, so that's something that they are still playing around with the idea of. And they did mention that there will still be in-person gaming to some extent. They are going to try to find workarounds to make sure that that is safe but they are going ahead with it and trying to make it as normal a convention, as normal a Gen Con as they possibly can, given the current situation. There are a number of publishers that have already expressed interest and say that they're going to be there, and of course, a number of people who want to attend. Everybody wants to go to Gen Con and, and have a good time, I think, and people missed it last year, certainly. Normally, it takes place around beginning of August, end of July, so this is about a month and a half delay, um, mm -hmm. and as of right now badges are still not on sale. So while they announced that date, no one's able to get a badge or try to get a hotel room in their hotel thing that they go up for. Uh, the so lottery. That, yes, the lottery, that's the word, has not, has not been released just yet. So we're waiting on that. But it is a big deal. You know, we really didn't know if Gen Con was going to happen at all. And delaying it is pretty significant it is only a month and a half delay. What do you think about that time span? Is that long enough that you think you're hoping it's it's going to be safe to attend? Like how much of a difference do you think that's making for them? Well, first off, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. That's the vaccinations. Regardless of whether they require it or not, it's probably a big deal. And from a United States standpoint, you know, things are different wherever you come from. We seem like if you're optimistic, or as of right now, you know, I haven't waited too much. I'm waiting. I have not got my shot yet. Jonathan, you have not. But it seems like we, at least there's a good chance, you know, I, I don't want to say that nothing confirmed. I have no source of the site that, that we could, we could have it by August or maybe end of July, you know, and if that's true, pushing it by this much, it's like, I, I feel like it's just the right amount to be like, look. End of summer, most of the United States, or a good portion, the good, the 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 bare minimum, I guess, would be the, probably the best way to say this, is vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That said, of course, as you said, Jonathan, and I said in the beginning, we don't know yet. Something can happen. Pushing it by itself in a vacuum, I think, is probably it seems like a pretty good deal. Now that at least we have a little bit of information on the vaccine. The things I've seen online, though, is that this is going to be. There's a lot going on now. First off, as Jonathan, you were you made very clear and pointed out yourself, uh, this coincides with a very big holiday. Yeah, as a person who was raised Jewish, uh, this is taking place the weekend of Yom Kippur, which if you're not familiar, it is pretty much the most significant holiday in Judaism. Uh, pretty big deal, and that is probably going to 
cut out attendance for anyone who uh, is a member of that religion. I mean, uh, I, I myself am, am not super observant of Judaism, but f for anyone who, e even for the people who are like, you know, I don't really observe it that closely, that might be the one holiday that they do get together with their family for. It's kind of a big deal. Right. I mean, it'd be like, Scheduling on Christmas. It is. It is kind of like that. Yeah. Or maybe. Yeah. Or Easter or something. Yeah. It's it, it's according to them, Gen Con, they said I saw on Twitter that that was just the only date they could get by pushing it, which is unfortunate. But it's a fact. Yeah. It's what happened. Uh, another thing I saw that um, was something I'm a little worried, not maybe worried, but curious to see what happens is some other conventions have been doing that as well. And all of a sudden, it sounds like there's a whole lot of conventions that got pushed that may have been spread out over, you know, four or five months to September and October. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's going to be a really, not even just for the consumer's sake, but I wonder for those who are publishers, they're going to be like, can we make it to all of these? Or are we going to have to drop some? Yeah. Which I think is going to be another thing to keep an eye out for. Because if, let's say you do decide, just for the sake, because this is the one we're talking about, to go to Gen Con, you're like, I've always gone. I missed out. I really want this. I'm I'm pretty sure or already have gotten the shot. I'm excited to go. But let's say you go because you're excited for that new fancy flight announcement that they always do on the show floor. And they're not there. I mean, I don't I think they're gonna be there. I think that's probably a safer bit. But you get the you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's you it's know? more likely the the smaller publishers that will be forced to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Who will really be hurt by that? And yeah, that's tough. It's it's just it's something that's unfortunate. You know, this kind these kinds of it's not it's gr not growing pains. It's it's transition pains, I guess, as we kind of are figuring out as a society how do we move from this period to a future where we can try to get back to normal in some regard. And yeah, there's going to be difficulties like that. And I am you know still just concerned for the state of the convention itself, assuming that they're able to make it safe and make everything, uh, you know, make sure there's no danger to attendees. How different is it going to be? How much worse is that experience going to be? It's certainly going to be different. My guess is it's not going to be like if you've never been to Gen Con before and you're really looking forward to it, I would Don't guess let this jade your experience. Yeah, you aren't gonna get like the full experience you would like to have. I, I think it will probably be more of a letdown. Also, in so it's in September, not you know going back to the scheduling thing. A lot of people usually have time off in the summer. You know, right. or, I, I didn't even I forgot to even bring that up, like school and whatnot. You know, yeah. So it's that's that's harder too to to get people, which maybe in some ways works in their favor because as they said, they're trying to lower attendance anyway. I've, yeah, but that feel uh, I guess yeah, but it feels really <laughs> bad. But they are doing the online and pop up stuff. I do hope that they give them the focus they deserve. Because I do and, think this is one of the things, you know, at the beginning we were saying like, yeah, this is what can be a boon if you really make that online feel like something worthwhile, not the, um, the, what, what, like the, not just the consolation the prize. Yes. That's the, that doesn't for, uh, but you like, I'm, re I'm really curious. You brought it up in your, what we don't fully know of like, they're trying to get a gaming experience. Does that mean like. We're going to have stores there, but no demos. Does it mean like none of the tournaments are going to happen or like they're going to be maybe like half them out because they need to sp space out the tables more? Like if you if you've been to Gen Con before, you know, they have a huge auditorium with all these tables for all the kinds of uh, crazy cool tournaments going on. Arkham Yuji, Arkham Horror Card Game usually has a thing. Uh, there's plenty of fun party game like the Wits and Wagers thing is was always fun to go to in like two rooms in a boom or werewolf. We'll see what happens because that's a big part for, for a lot of people. This is a time when you can come even more so now to get a chance to play some games with people. Yeah, um, I think that for for events, things that you mentioned, like Werewolf is a pretty easy one. You can socially distance and, and play that with a group pretty well. But anything that has really, you know, pieces and any kind of components that you have to be passing to each other and playing to a common shared area. It's going to be hard to figure that out. If they, you know, if vaccines are widely available and they require them, that will make it a lot easier, certainly. But even then, they're still going to need to make adjustments for these things. And I don't know what that show floor even looks like. Um, we've speculated before, is it going to be less of a thing where you can sit down and play a demo and more of a thing where you're just kind of walking by and you get to see the demo and talk about it from a distance, but not really right. play it? For yourself. The way I thought, or and it might still be it. 
who knows, would be literally more like a tour guide. Right. Like you, you would actually have, can the three o'clock people please step up? On your left, you see Asmodee. <laughs> <laughs> On your right, upper deck, watch out for that Marvel villain. You know, <laughs> It could be. I mean, I joke a little, but I sort of think that's what it would be like. There are, you know, there's, there's possible tweaks that they could make and, you know, that people could still explain a game and, and kind of run through a demo for you. You just won't be able to sit down as much, maybe. Right. I mean, that's not, that's not new. I mean, there are demos there sometimes that aren't you sit down and just play the game it's i'm going to show you like a turn or two i don't think that's too crazy it's more of just like i said parsing out the number of people how they spread out is it like set time that kind of thing yeah i hope everything goes well and goes right because i know a lot of us do need this kind of social experience to go out and play these games and not just us as in terms of the consumer once again uh, not just the big and small publishers, these conventions are a big deal. This is where they can really get the hype out or maybe sell some of those games because, especially, uh, you know, for smaller developers, sure, Fancy Flight's going to sell their games. But, you know, if I go up, pick up my Arkham Horror packs or whatever from there, and then I walk around and I see a new smaller game, they're like, oh, that looks cool. It's a better chance where you're going to get to show off your game. So conventions are it is also a, really nice. Conventions are also a really big place where a lot of f- freelancers pitch their designs to publishers. So, mm-hmm. in, in not an insignificant way, Gen Con really is a major force in the industry, and having it is a big deal. Uh, as of right now, as we said, uh, we haven't gotten our vaccines, but we are hopeful that if badges are available, that Roll for Crit will be attending Gen Con this year. And for those of you who can't, we'll be reporting the news to you. But uh, badges aren't for sale yet. Uh, nothing's 100% confirmed. You know, a lot of things could happen between now and then. But hopefully we will be attending. And if you're watching, let us know. What do you think about all this? Will you be attending? And what, what sacrifices would you be willing to make in terms of the experience? You know, how far are you willing to take it where it's still worth it to you to visit Gen Con with some of these limitations in place? You can, you can let us know in the comments. I'd be very interested to hear what people think about this. Would you be fine just walking around? Are you like, look, I don't go to the tournaments. I'm there to just see everything that's new. Or is that important to you? Do you be like, I really, I come there to sit down with my, like a few games I want to bring and hope other people come and join me. I'm really curious to know. Yeah, a lot of different, lot of different possible takes on this one. We'll keep you updated as more Gen Con news comes out. Stay tuned. Until then, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this has been Roll for Crit. Catch the latest from Roll for Crit by liking and subscribing and supporting us on Patreon. You're not a hidden traitor, are you? Come on, like us.